Please, Jesus. A, wa a warm uh, welcome to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm happy to be with you all again uh, today. So before we get started with the session, can I ask uh, you to please start with an opening prayer? Praise God. Praise Jesus. Good afternoon, everyone. Jesus. Good afternoon. Sister. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit. Amen. Spirit of living Lord, come into our midst. Break us, melt us, mold us, and fill us with your words of wisdom and love. Help us as we listen to your word that we will not only be hearers, but also doers of what we are taught. Help us to concentrate in today's session. Bless the speakers with your wisdom. Let everything we do, our praise, our penance, and our request be acceptable in your sight. Lord, we give you all the glory and honor. Accept our prayer. We ask this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So today, um, let us uh, study on something which we do uh, every day. It's not something uh, different, but something that we do regularly. So uh, if I should ask uh, you, um, when would it have been the, the, the last time you would have worried? So any of the participants, you can just unmute yourself and uh, respond. When would have been the last time you would have worried? Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. When would it have been the last time that you would have worried? Anybody? Sister Sinjina? Just unmute yourself. You are worried every time. Hello. Uh, yes, Sister Piedad, go ahead. We are worried with something, even small things every day. <laughs> right, praise God. So, uh, worry is something which comes to us, um, you know, very easily, right? Yes. And uh, when we uh, worry, uh, it's not that uh, we stop everything and we start worrying. Supposing, uh, for example, say... Uh, I, I have to make a payment of a bill and I know that there is the last date that is approaching tomorrow and maybe I'm not having enough funds with me and uh, because I do not have enough funds with me, um, I'm te I tend to worry. So maybe uh, I'm, I'm cooking but on, on my mind is the bill payment which is due. Maybe I am ironing, I'm cleaning, I'm driving. Whatever I'm doing, that bill payment uh, remains on my mind and I, I'm worried about it. So does it mean that now when I'm worrying, am I required to stop doing everything and just sit and worry exclusively? No. Do I worry exclusively or do I do worry along with the other work that I'm doing? Along with the other work along with the other work. So what it means is that when I'm worried, I'm, it is in my mind that I'm worried and I'm continuing to do my other work. I use my hands, I use my legs, I use my, uh, you know, uh, to a great extent, I use my attention. But at the same time, somewhere at the corner of my mind, there is worry. Now, uh, the let us look at Joshua chapter 1 verses 8. Who will read for today? Thank you, Jesus. Holy Innocence Convent. Holy 
holy innocent convent please god okay i'll do please jesus this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success please god now what what is uh, referred to in this uh, it, it says this book of the law so when it says this book of the law what what is this book of the law referring to it is bible i think word is, of god it is the word of god it is the bible so so the word of god here uh, tells that we are called to um, you know we, we shall not allow the word of god to depart from our mouth but but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it so is it possible for us to meditate day and night and if 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 we are going to be meditating on the word of god day and night how will we do the work how will we attend to things so isn't this very uh, demanding uh, that uh, you know uh the the word of god is asking us uh, to meditate on 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 the word of god day and night is it practical is it practical for us to meditate on the word of god day and night praise jesus let us make this a very interactive session uh, we are here to learn and no answer is actually a, a wrong answer but every every response that you give will only help us to have a better understanding to have more clarity and the holy spirit is is teaching us through this session so let us come with a very open mind it's okay it, it's okay if if the answer is wrong it doesn't matter but through that uh, everybody in the class will learn and it will benefit so my question is is it possible for us to meditate on god's word day and night is it practical yes sister it is it is practical thank you sister anybody else uh, on the call who thinks that it is not possible to meditate on the word of god day and night anybody thinks that it is not possible for us to meditate uh, day and night sometimes sister we get distracted we uh, we get involved in the problem seriously so that we avoid god word of god so during that time what we we can just pray during that time uh, we can think of uh, i mean uh, praying praying uh, jesus thinking of meditating like that we can do it i think okay so i think in times of uh, forgetting i mean uh, that problem we involved in that we get into it no we get deeper into the problem thinking more about that so that is that so instead of that thinking we can think of a uh, word of god Please go. So now, uh, the the very um, thing that the word of God is telling us that you shall meditate on it day and night. It simply means that in our consciousness, when we are in our awareness, we are called to think about the word of God over and over again, just like as we saw at the beginning. that when uh, when a person is worried the person is is worried about it all the time maybe the person is driving even a, a, the person may be even praying the person may be in the church attending mass and yet may be uh, thinking about what needs to be done and how it will be done and how the help will come so that means my mind is doing the job of worrying and it does not require kind of a special authorization or permission it does not uh, require me to stop uh, you know to stop working it happens simultaneously so in the same way uh, joshua was given the instruction by god that you are required to meditate on it day and night 
so that why are we required to meditate on a day and night we are required to meditate on a day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it that means uh, the the law or, or what is written in the bible is is written for us it is god's god's will for us and when we meditate on a day and night then we are called to be careful to do or to work according to what is written and when that happens the promise is that for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so if you see here many a times uh, my dear brothers and sisters uh, we think that when i pray when i pray god is going to make uh, uh, make things work for me when i uh, pray to god and i say god give me a good job god give me a good life partner god give me a good uh, uh, or a good i can say uh, give me promotion so maybe uh, there could be like you know when we do not have a uh, good understanding or a, a understanding of the word of god i may think okay now it is god who has got the task to do and he is going to make uh, something uh, work for me but the word of god is saying here for then you will make your way prosperous so we do we see it very clearly that the word of god is saying you will make your way prosperous that means how how am i going to make my way prosperous the word of god is telling us that when i take the book of law and i do not allow it to uh, depart from my mouth i'm not allowing it to depart from my mouth that means i am speaking the word of god over and over again i am thinking on it over and over again so when i am speaking it out and when i am meditating on it i'm reflecting on it what happens is the promise says that for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success so all of us want success in our lives so for us to get success for the, for example if the person is a student what will the student do the student will take the books will study day and night day and night day and night then will appear in the exams then the 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 test will be there then there will be grading and depending on the performance there will be success so in just the way a, a student who goes to school and when the teacher tells the student okay on this particular date of the month you will have an exam so when the student is told there is going to be an exam on a particular day what does the student do the student will start studying will will study on the subject day and night day and night so that when the test comes the the child the student is able to respond to the questions and get good score so which will give that child good success now this is when it comes to the world system of studying the, um, the 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 lessons that we we have but in in the in the kingdom of god what the word of god is telling us is that when we meditate on the word of god day and night just like in a school the student has a test in the same way in in our uh, in a life as well there will be a test so it's only when i have studied when i have studied i will know what is supposed to be my response if i have not studied if i do not have just like the students if the students has not learned it by heart what do we say when when a student when a child is studying we say you better learn this by heart these are important formulas they will come for exam so in the same way the book of law the word of god that is given to us we are required to speak this with our mouth and have deposit of this in our heart so that when life gives us a test out of the abundance of the heart the mouth is able to speak 
and we are then able to get victory in that situation. So when we are following this instruction, it is, it is saying that then you will make your way prosperous. So nobody else is going to make your way prosperous. Nobody else is going to give you good success. It is by you meditating day and night that you will make your way prosperous. I'll just like to share an example. Now, just a few days back, my younger son, who's seven years old, he came down with a fever. He had cold, he had fever. And uh, what happened was when I uh, spoke to the doctor, uh, she said, okay, let me check. So when she uh, examined him, she felt that uh, it needed to be tested. So she told me that uh, COVID is still, uh, you know, very much uh, prevalent and a lot of children are getting uh, COVID. And also the, the new thing is H1N1, the swine flu. So uh, she said, uh, better you do test for both. Now, she told me to do test for both and I needed to go for doing the test uh, the following morning. That was on 26th. Today, we are on 28th. Now, what happens? So when the doctor has told me that my son has to be tested for COVID and H1N1, it, it would be that if I start focusing on what the doctor has spoken, then I can be meditating on it day and night so all through the day and all through the night i could be led to meditate upon it and when i keep meditate upon meditating upon it and then i begin to speak it out of my mouth actually that's exactly what happens so if if a person gets something and they stick to it and they think of it day and night and they speak out of their mouth that ex that's exactly what what happens because if we look at Proverbs, praise God, Proverbs 18, 21, praise Jesus, praise God. Yeah, can you read, sister? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Praise God. So when, when a person starts meditating upon it, then the then what happens? It's the, There is a deposit of what I'm meditating in my heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the person speaks. So if, if there is no word of God deposited in a person's heart, what will happen is with unknowingly, the person will start speaking sickness, diagnosis, test reports. But in my case, because I have had the deposit that by the wounds of Jesus, uh, let us see that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Two twenty-four. One Peter two twenty-four. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Praise God. So out of the deposit in my heart, I started meditating. I started only speaking about, thank you, Jesus, by your wounds, my son is already healed. Just like 1 Peter 2.24 has it, we also know that in, in Matthew chapter 8, Verses 17. Praise God. This was, this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Praise God. That means Jesus has taken our illnesses and borne our diseases. When he has taken it all into his body, Surely, we are now not required to meditate upon what a kind of a report that will come. So, because I, I got this uh, instruction from the doctor to go and do the test for these two uh, viruses, I could be led to thinking and meditating and, and uh, you know, coming into a space of fear. But praise be to God. 
that I now have the understanding according to the written word of God, whereby I could speak whatever the word of God has given me. And, and that is by the wounds of Jesus, my son is healed. Jesus has taken the illnesses and diseases from his body and he is completely healed. So when we went for the test the following day, uh, we made a prayer that, thank you, Jesus, in your name, we receive a good report of testing for, for whatever blood, uh, whatever swab test that they were doing, we, we claimed beforehand. And even when, when we were just um, at the point of the sample uh, collection, uh, at the hospital, I just uh, spoke to my son and I said, Baba, we will make a prayer that now whatever sample is taken, it is a sample whereby we are getting a good report in Jesus' name, a negative report. And my little boy uh, agreed with my prayer and he said, Amen. So all the time I was in a space of rest. I, I was very uh, calm. I, I didn't want to think of like, you know, sometimes what happens many a times when I'm awaiting, especially when, when any test reports are awaited and maybe it's a blood test for any um, sickness, especially critical illnesses, the, the mind goes on a fast track and thinks, oh, what if this report comes bad? What if it is a sickness report? Then what will happen? You know, the mind is going on such a fast pace. The person will think, what will happen to, uh, what if it comes positive? Then what will happen to my job? Then what will happen to my finances? What will happen to the family income? So the, the mind is just racing. But when, when I have the promises of God, when I have the word of God and that the, the word has been deposited in, in my heart and I speak from my heart, I, I withdraw that word which is deposited in my heart and I start speaking. When I start speaking the word of God, what happens is my mind is now not focused on what is um, likely to happen what negative thing is likely to happen because what is worry? Worry is negative meditation. But when I choose to meditate on the word of God, I am speaking and I am, I am um, uh, thinking over what God has done, what God has promised. And we know that what God has promised, he is faithful. He is faithful to his promises. And uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, Every promise of God is a yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So when the word of God says in Philippians 4, 8, that we have a good report according, uh, according when, when we are in Christ, we have a good report, then I have to now believe that I have received a good report. So I went on only saying, thank you, Jesus. My son is completely healed. And in your name, uh, we have received a good report, a negative report for the viruses that are required to be tested. And praise be to God that by late night, we got the report and it was a negative report. Now, the, the enemy does not uh, end uh, his task over there. His job is to keep putting pressure. His job is to keep uh, keep on putting the pressure on us so that we succumb to the pressure. So what happened was this report we got on the 26th. Today is the 28th. And uh, uh, this morning when he woke up, what he uh, told me was that, Mama, I feel like vomiting. And he vomited. And all through the morning, he did not want to eat anything. He had no appetite. And, you know, the, the enemy was putting thoughts in my mind. Oh, you have a class at three o'clock. What will happen? What if he gets worse? Now he's already not eating. He's already not, um, you know, he's, he's feeling like vomiting. So you better go and inform uh, sister, sister Pieta, sister Sinjina, you better go and inform them that today it won't be possible for, for me to have the class. So now it's like, you know, one side the enemy is putting the pressure and another side is, is my commitment is when, when I have got a, a assignment, the assignment for me is to go out and preach the gospel of Christ. 
so mm -hmm. that is my desire my desire is that i have to go out and preach the gospel of christ and the other side there is pressure coming in so by faith i was believing this morning that the class is uh, held as per schedule and it is done the other side the enemy was putting pressure saying that see he is not well he he may get fever he may if what if he vomits more uh, what what if he uh, continues like that what if he doesn't eat anything so on both the side the the battle was going on so what a person chooses to meditate on that is what comes to pass in that person's life so what i did was i only went on saying lord jesus you are the lord of my life and i believe that you you were uh, you you have been resurrected and you are seated at the right hand of the father and because of that i receive salvation and because i have received salvation healing is given to me and your word says lord jesus according to act 1631 praise god let us go and see there act 1631 Jesus Here the word of God says that and they said believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household so i started meditating on this which says that believe in the Lord Jesus and i said lord i believe in you and i believe that i am saved and you have promised that Uh, when when i believe i'll be saved me and my household and when i'm saved salvation is the entire package salvation is the entire package which includes a healing a prosperity it includes our our well being a peace a joy and all that jesus came to give us so i started meditating on that so because i was meditating on that i did not allow the negative talk the the uh, fear to come in as to what may happen and praise be to god by 11 11:30 the boy was beginning to look active and he had a proper normal lunch this afternoon and right now you know i am sharing the word he is moving around in in the hall so i know that he is perfectly fine so so uh, what i'm trying to share from my own experience is that what i choose to focus on what i choose to um, meditate upon ponder upon over and over again that that word becomes alive becomes flesh in me when when i have any situation like uh, maybe it is sickness maybe it is some other at that point in time the deposit of the word of god that i have put into my heart i am able to withdraw it mix my faith and speak it out of my mouth and when i speak it out of my mouth what does the word of god say we look at mark praise god mark 1124 thank you jesus thank you jesus hey sister there to so i tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours praise god so when i pray and i believe i believe that i have received it it will be mine so when i when i say my prayer my prayer is is nothing but taking the promises of god believing in my heart and speaking it out of my mouth so when i speak it life and death is in the power of the tongue so whatever i speak i will receive so if i take the uh, take the symptoms the the sickness what i see and i start speaking that that's exactly what is going to manifest but on the contrary if i take the promise of god which tells me that healing is mine salvation is mine and when i believe in the lord jesus i am saved me and my household is saved so i cancel the authority of the sickness which comes which shows itself at my door 
to have any further power, further authority to continue to remain there. So I resist it, I rebuke it, and it has to leave. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so meditating on the word of God is, is uh, very important for us. And how will I meditate on the word of God? I need to first um, read. I need to first read the word of God or I need to hear the word of God. I need to internalize that word of God in my heart. I need to learn that word. You know, I need to make a deposit. I need to then speak it out of my mouth. And as I speak it out of my mouth, I need to believe that whatever is going out of my mouth, the word that goes out of my mouth does not come back void. That is what uh, we, we see in Isaiah 55. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Isaiah 55, 11. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sister. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Praise God. So, so this word of God, which is given to me, and when it goes out of my mouth, there is a promise of God which says that it shall not return to me empty. It's not going to come back empty. And it shall accomplish that which I purpose and I shall, su and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So there are various situations that are happening in our lives. I need to pick that word of God and when I believe and I speak it out of my mouth, that shall accomplish um, which I purpose. So supposing we, we know that um, in, in case of a situation where there is lack, there is poverty, there is no income, there is, uh, you know, sometimes we can come to a, uh, people come to a position whereby there is no uh, enough money to buy food. In, in such cases, what is, what is that word of God that needs to go out of my mouth? So I, I, we know that that's what is given in Philippians um, 4, 6, 16. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Four. Four, uh, sorry, Philippians 4, 19, sorry. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So anybody who is in a situation of lack can take this word of God, Philippians 4, 19. Meditate on this word of God day and night. Maybe you are doing your household chores. Maybe you are in an office. You are driving. You are in a marketplace. You have you you ponder over it over and over again, and keep saying, "Thank you, thank you, Lord, for for I believe that you you are supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus." Mm -hmm. So what happens? We we've seen that in Isaiah fifty five eleven. The word that goes out of my mouth, it does not come back void. It does not come back empty, but comes with what it is sent out for. So, so whatever I choose to ponder, whatever I choose to meditate upon, when I believe that and I speak it out of my mouth, that's exactly what is going to be received by me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so uh, many a times it can it can uh, be such that maybe there is a child uh, in the in the family, and this child is um, mysterious, and uh, the family members, including the parents, uh, if they do not have an understanding of how the, the kingdom of God works, can be led to say, uh, okay. 
he is always mischievous he is always mischievous he will never change so what are we doing we are planting seeds and whatever we speak out of our mouth that's exactly what is going to come back so then we will find ourselves that this child day by day is getting more and more worse so rather than the situation being improved we see that that situation is becoming worse it it's not only in in a case of children it can even be uh, supposing a person is is having an assignment uh, on a on a given project and uh, that person um, in 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 a particular association is given a project and the person does not know exactly how to go how to go ahead how to go further so so in ignorance the person can end up saying i don't know what what to do i don't know how to do so i don't think i will be able to do it so all the time what the person is thinking i don't know how to do it i don't know what will happen how will this uh, how will this even um, be done so the person is speaking now now when the person is speaking doubt anxiety fear that's exactly what will happen and and the person will not be able to complete that but instead instead when when an assignment is given and you have no idea you can always speak speak the word of god you can speak the wisdom of god because if you look at uh, scriptures if you look at uh, luke 4:18 uh, what does it say luke 4:18 thank you jesus praise god the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set out set at liberty those who are oppressed so so this is speaking about all of us who are who are in the lord the spirit of the lord is given to us now this spirit is the holy spirit now this holy spirit anointing is there upon our lives and we are called to go out and proclaim the good news to the poor to set the captives free to have the recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed now when we look at uh, how speaking about the spirit of the lord we look at it in isaiah praise jesus isaiah 11:2 Thank you Jesus. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Praise God. So when a person takes the scriptures and start meditating upon them and then start speaking it out of the mouth, what is happening is that what you are meditating and speaking and believing in your heart is what is coming to pass so when the person says the spirit of the lord is resting so so when you apply it for yourself you need to personalize the scriptures so what will you say you say the spirit of the lord is resting upon me the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the lord so when you speak that the spirit of wisdom and understanding is resting upon me will that spirit will that spirit of god the holy spirit not give you the wisdom on how to accomplish the assignment that you have at hand praise god praise god thank you jesus so will the spirit of god the holy spirit give you wisdom when you start meditating upon the scripture yes thank you jesus so so let us see uh, a situation in in the old testament wherein um, we had abraham the father of faith how he was meditating upon the promises of god which allowed him to to live a life of obedience praise jesus so we we go to uh, genesis 
chapter 22 verses 1 onwards uh, sister uh, sister priyada you can read verses 1 to 4 thank you jesus after these things god tested abraham and said to him abraham and he said here i am he said take your son your only son isaac whom you love and go to the land of moria and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which i shall tell you praise god now here we we know that abraham was given a promise that he will have a a, a, a son at the age of 75 and isaac was born only when abraham was 100 years old so abraham waited to be a father all his life till he was 100 and god gave him a promise specifically at the age of 75 so even if you consider from the time he got the promise he there was a good 25 years of waiting time and he waited and he waited and finally god blessed him with isaac and now imagine now the lord is telling abraham you take your son and you take your son and you go to the land of moria and there you offer your son as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which i will tell you my dear brothers and sisters just ponder for a moment imagine um, you know many families uh, have um, a single child and and many a times we see where there is even a single child the child may have a desire to go and serve the lord and uh, the the parents often times come back i don't say always but often say you are our only child and how what will happen uh, if you go and become a religious or you are you may be our only son or our only daughter so if you want to become a priest or a nun who will be there for us do you all ever come across such situation sister that you know the the there is a only child of the parents and the the child wants to go and join the religious orders and the uh, parents are not happy about it or are uh, like you know objecting to that decision at any time have you come across such a situation anybody yes, can respond yes anybody can respond uh, it happens right Yes, sister. And, and and when a person wants to yes. be yes, a, yes. A, a religious, the person is only going. It it is a vocation that that is chosen. The person is is not going to die. The person is only going to work in that area in that vocation. But you just see Abraham's position. His only son, whom he waited till the age of hundred, is asked by God. not just for himself but but abraham on his with his own hands is asked to go and and give his son as a burnt offering can you imagine what what really that means imagine taking like you know you just close your eyes and uh, for those of you uh, like you know just imagine like uh, just taking a child a, a parent taking a child putting the child on a altar and then you know uh, putting fire to to it so that it is a burnt offering is is that even easy for anyone to do no praise god no but but let us see no. what does abraham do praise god thank you jesus So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Praise God. thank you jesus so here we see that the very next morning he rose early morning 
and he took his son and he set out. And, and verses 22, 4 tells us that on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, which means that all this time he was not with his eyes lifted up. He was with his eyes lowered down. And what would he have been doing with his eyes lowered down? He would have been meditating. He would have been meditating upon what promises that the Lord has had given him. Because in Genesis 21 uh, verses uh, 12, let us just see the, the promise. Genesis 21, 12. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But God said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For through Isaac shall your offspring be named. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So here, God was talking to Abraham in context to Ishmael and Hagar. And, and God told Abraham, you do whatever Sarah says to you. And, and further we see that she, God said, for through Isaac shall your offspring be named. So God had given a promise to Abraham that the offsprings will come through Isaac. So now we see in, in Genesis 22, praise God, when, when he was going to the mountain and he lifted up his eyes only on the third day, it was a time that Abraham was meditating upon God's promise that his offspring, his generations will come through Isaac. So when his generations were to come from Isaac, Abraham believed whatever God told him. So he did not have any doubt, any fear about God not fulfilling the promise. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, sister, read the next one, Genesis 22, 5. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. Praise God. Now here, uh, Genesis 22, verses 5. Let me take a different translation. Uh, just a moment. Genesis 5. So uh, I think it is in, in the NRSV translation. I don't have the NRSV translation. In, and uh, Abraham tells the, the servants that he and the boy will go and we will come again to you. This translation doesn't have it uh, specified. But the, he says, um, we, will, we will go and come back to you again. So which means that when Abraham was told by God to offer the sacrifice of his son as a burnt offering and Abraham agreed to it, he also believed in his heart that God is able to raise him even if he is asked for, a, for a, a burnt offering as a sacrifice. So what he does is he does not hesitate because he has already known that in his heart, he's been meditating on it. So both of them go further. So we go to Genesis 22, 7 and 8. And Isaac said to his father, Father Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. Praise God. So now we see in verses 20 to 8, how much uh, faith Abraham had. 
When the son asked him, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? He said, God will provide for himself the lamb. See the confidence. Now this confidence has come to Abraham because he has been meditating over God's promise. And that promise was that offsprings of Isaac will come. So Abraham's offsprings will come through Isaac, sorry. So when he was convinced and he was meditating upon it, he believed it, that it is God who will provide the lamb that is required. And then they both went uh, together. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Genesis, the next two sister. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God, seeing you have not, you have not beheld your son, on, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by his, his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so here we see the, the faithfulness of Abraham. Abraham did not have any evidence in the scene when he was going to offer his son as the burnt offering. But what he did was he believed. He believed and he meditated upon the promise that was given to him that his offsprings would come through Isaac. And when his offsprings would come through Isaac, it is God who would make sure that Isaac is alive. Praise God. So, so he does not hesitate. And, and, and that believing was counted Abraham as righteousness. So we see here in... Genesis 22, 14. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. Praise God. And, and the 18th one, the last one, sister. And in, your offspring, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obe obeyed my voice. Praise Jesus. So because of obedience, because of obedience and because of what he believed, Abraham was blessed. And this blessing, this blessing has has been given to the generations of Abraham. Now my question is, this blessing which was given to Abraham, is it applicable for you and for me? Yes, very much. Is yes. it applicable? Yes. So, so yes. What, what makes you so sure, sister, that it is applicable for you and me? There in the Bible, it is told that it is because see, Abraham was there in that land. We are here in this country. So how could we be the descendants of Abraham to take these blessings of Abraham for ourselves? 
इनहेरिटेंस So Galatians three twenty nine. You are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, as according to promise. Praise God. So whoever is in Christ, whoever believes Jesus, the Word of God tells us clearly here. And if you are Christ, Then you are Abraham's offspring, so as according to the promise. So whatever promise was given of blessing to Abraham, we receive that promise when we are in Christ. Praise God. Now, if if Abraham had to consider that, okay, I have only one child. Now, uh, why should I offer this child unto the Lord? Because I have waited for a good hundred years. and if he hadn't to um, agree to god's uh, request of sacrificing him would he have got the promise would he have got the promise of blessings please god no no so so he um, got the promise because he was willing to sacrifice his only son and that we see here that when it came to abraham he did not love his son more than he loved love god he loved god so much that he was willing to sacrifice his own son as was instructed by god because we see this in matthew Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Praise God! Thank you, Jesus. Sorry. So, did did Abraham love God more than his son? Yes. and that is why he is worthy that is why he was worthy and that love for god uh, allowed him to believe uh, it allowed him to believe in god's promise because he experienced god's love only when we understand the love of god it's only then we are able to believe in his promises it's like you know if if uh, a, a child is promised by the father that uh, okay uh, you get uh, once you get or once you receive a particular age uh, say many a times we have parents promising their children okay once you become 18 we will buy a bike for you so in those cases the the child will have no reason to doubt about the father's willingness to give the gift of a bike because the child knows and understand that the father loves him and whatever the father has promised he he knows that he will fulfill so in the same way it is required for us to understand it is required for us rather to ask ourselves do i know my abba father so much that i believe that every word that he has written every word that he has promised he is faithful to his promises that he is fulfilling each of those am i am i in it's good for me to ask 
my, my own self, it, it's good for each one of us to ask ourselves, am I having that confidence in my Abba Father? Because Father is, is, is my uh, loving daddy. And when, when uh, the, the Father, God the Father allowed his only beloved son to go and, uh, and die for the sake of salvation of the entire humanity, and through Jesus, we are adopted as sons and daughters. Do I have the confidence that along with his beloved son who was allowed to go on the cross, he will give me everything else? Do I have the confidence that along with giving Jesus to, for my Jesus for my sake, God the Father will give me everything? Yes. Praise God. That is exactly what is required. And that is what Abraham believed. And, and that believing um, led him to take the steps, uh, take action. When God asked this, his son to be sacrificed, he understood the love of God. He understood that God is faithful. He understood that God, when he has said that his, his offsprings will come through Isaac, he will ensure, God the Father will ensure that it is brought to pass. So that is why the word of God tells us here in Matthew 10, 37, when Jesus himself said, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of, worthy of me. So if we make many a times, it so happens that, you know, uh, when we have our children, uh, the, the children take the place a place which is higher than that of God. So uh, if I do this, my, my son will not be very happy. So I'm okay not to do it. For example, if I sit in a Bible class for one hour, my son is not going to like it. He will say, Mama, why you want to sit in a Bible class? Uh, we'll go out for shopping. We'll go out for party. We'll go to the beach. So what happens? What my son says becomes more uh, important than me having spent time with the Lord. So the word of God says here, if I love my son or daughter more than me, the word of God says that you are not worthy of me. And this is what Jesus himself said. We see the red text which shows us that this is what Jesus said. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For he said, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So when, when uh, Abraham uh, actually allowed to lose the life of his son, did he, did he find it back? Or, or did yes. he just lose his son? He took the decision that because God is asking and then he lost his son. He lose Isaac. He, he, he did not lose, lose Isaac, right? No. Praise God. So uh, uh, related to this, we, we also have a scripture in Hebrews uh, eleven seventeen. 17. Uh, a few more that we see before we wind up. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Praise God. So here we see in Hebrews 11, 19, he says, he considered, he considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, even to raise him from the dead. That was the kind of confidence that Abraham had on God because God has promised him that, I, uh, that through Isaac shall your offspring be named. Because of this promise, he believed 
he considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead. What happens to us in situations when we are in, in uh, lack, uh, poverty, um, in, in sickness? Are we, are we uh, ready to consider what God has spoken through his written word? Are we willing to consider, just as Abraham considered, are we willing to consider what, what the word of God is telling us? If, if we look at uh, James 1, 3, praise Jesus, just uh, five minutes more, sister. Yes, sir. James 1, 3. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we can start from uh, James 1, 2. Count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so here the word of God is telling us that when we are meted with trials, you know, it, it is, we can, we can go in any one of the direction. We can stay in faith, take the promises of God, meditate upon them, speak them out of my mouth after having deposited them in my heart. And when the test comes, you know, go through the test because the word of God says that uh, when we are faced with the, with the situation of being tested, it, that's where we are perfected. The word of God in James 1, 4 says that, you know, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Abraham too was tested. It was not a small test. It was a test wherein his own son had to be offered as a burnt offering not just sending the child away, not just send, giving the child to somebody else to adopt, but to be offered as a burnt offering. Now that is actually worship. True worship is giving ourselves as a living sacrifice. And that's what uh, I think it is in uh, Hebrews, Romans 12. Please God, just a moment. Romans 12.1 I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So, so when, um, when uh, Abraham went to the mountain with his son, he went there to offer uh, his son um, Isaac as a, a living sacrifice and that was considered to be as worship because uh, if we look at Genesis uh, just give me a moment is I think uh, we, when we see this in Genesis 22 praise God Genesis 22, 5, uh, then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. So wh why was he going? He was going to sacrifice his son. He was going there to sacrifice his son and he called that as worship. We are going there to worship. And when we see this in, in Romans, uh, praise God, Romans 12, 1, it says, we are called to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So, so when we offer our, our lives as a living sacrifice, so how do we uh, sacrifice or, or offer our bodies as a living sacrifice god is not telling us to go and put ourselves on the altar wherein we are we are killed we are we are crucified nothing of that sort 
we we uh, our bodies are presented as a living sacrifice when we are we look at we look at it in Romans twelve two. Praise God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, which is good and acceptable and perfect. So, so when we are renewing our mind according to the word of God, that is leading to the transformation of our lives, which is allowing us to discern what is the will of God, what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, so my dear brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, um, we, we encounter various situations on a day-to-day -day basis. So it is uh, the choice is uh, given to us. What am I going to choose? Am I going to choose everything that I can see, that I'm, I'm able to experience? I am, uh, you know, led to think that it will happen that way. Am I going to hold fast to this? And deposit that in my heart, speak it out of my mouth, think over it over and over again and bring in fear and ultimately allow it to come to pass by giving an entry to the devil. Or am I going to stand in faith, take the promises of God, take the promises of God, meditate upon them, speak them out of my mouth and believe that he who has promised is faithful to his promises, just the way Abraham believed. And that is why that believing was accounted to him as righteousness. Abraham was said to be righteous because he believed, he believed in the promises of God. In the same way, now we who are in Christ, when, when we see, um, praise God, uh, and Peter, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So when we believe in Jesus, when we make him the Lord of our life, when we believe in our heart that God the Father raised him from the dead, now what happens is we are made the righteousness of God and everything that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross is received by us by faith. So what, what are we required to do? We are, the word of God tells us that in uh, if we have a look at Psalms, which is also talking about God's promises, Psalms 1 verses Verses two, sister, someone verses two and three. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Praise God. So that means the word of God is telling us here that when, when a person is delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night, just as we have seen that in, in Joshua 1.8, when the person is meditating on the, on, on the law of the Lord day and night, he is like a tree which is planted by streams of water, that it is yielding fruit and the leaves do not wither. So yielding fruit is fruit is what we give unto others. And, we, and its leaf does not wither. With, uh, leaves are the ones which are which is required for the tree to make food for itself. So its leaves don't wither and in due season there is fruit that is yielded. And in all that he does, he prospers. So am I am I someone who wants to have a prosperous life? If the answer is yes, then the solution here, the given here is that I need to delight in the law of the Lord and I need to meditate on it day and night. When I meditate on it day and night, then I am going to be prosperous. 
that's when the word of God says in, in Joshua 1, then you are going to make your ways prosperous and you're going to be successful. But many a times, my dear brothers and sisters, we fail. Why do we fail? We fail because, because we take the counsel of the wicked. So, so that is why someone one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. So when we do not take the wrong counsel, when we don't sit with, with the, the, the people who are going in the wrong way, the system of the world, and instead of doing that, delighting in the law of the Lord, because the word of God says, taste and see how good the Lord is. The, the, the sad thing is that we have not tasted the love of the Lord. And that is why we are, we are going out seeking love elsewhere. And none in this world is able to love us fully. It is only God and God alone can love us perfectly. And, and when we do not get accepted or feel loved, that's when every negative work of the evil one starts taking root in our lives one by one. But rather than that, if I stay in the presence of God, I delight in his word, I meditate on his word day and night, the promise of God is that I'm going to be like a tree which is yielding its fruit in season. And, and also it says that whatever, whatever I do, I prosper. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, that's what I wanted to share today on meditation on the word of God, how we do it, why we need to do it, and what has God promised us uh, when we do it, when we delight in his word and we meditate upon his word day and night, we are given the promise that we are going to be prosperous in all that we do. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So does anyone have any questions? Do we have any questions? Thank you, Jesus. Any questions or anybody would like to share any testimonies or, or share any? Yes, Sister Lolita, praise God. Uh, I'm, I'm finding it a little odd that uh, of, because when Isaac, when this happened, Isaac must have been four or five years old. So uh, could he allow something like that to happen, to allow himself to be bound? Uh, see, sister, actually... I'm, I'm a little confused about that. Uh, see, see, sister, the, the word of God is... Uh, it is written in the word of God. Let me go back uh, since you have this question. Just a second, let me share the screen again. Thank you, Jesus. So if we look at Genesis uh, 22, okay, we do not know the age of this boy, Isaac, the time that he was called to uh, sacrifice. But if we look later, first and foremost, I like to say, take you through here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Here the word of God tells that and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. So the word of God is telling us that Isaac was bound. And whatever is written in the word of God, I believe that it is true. I believe that that is what happened. So this is not for us for debate. This is not for us to... Um, think whether he really allowed himself to be tied. But the word of God is telling us that uh, he bound Isaac and he put him on the altar and he reached to his knife to slaughter him by which time the angel of the Lord called, called to him from heaven asking him not to do that. But if we look at, uh, I think it is uh, 23 Praise God. In the very next verse, we don't know exactly uh, which verse it is, but uh, a, a couple of uh, verses or chapters later, we know that um, 
Abraham is searching for a girl for Isaac to be married. So it is, it is not, uh, it's not that Isaac would have been a very small boy also, but his age is not given. But the Bible tells us that he was bound. How he was bound and what, what, what would have been the conversation at that point in time, we don't have that clarity. But he was bound. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Praise Jesus. Any any other question? Thank you, Jesus. Anybody would like to share any testimonies or an experience? Yes, I'd like to share. Please God, please go ahead. <coughs> My husband is an Alzheimer's patient, and I don't really uh, spend many hours out of the house. But there was that retreat that was announced uh, by the father, father Michael. I've always been a silent admirer of Father Michael, and I've enjoyed, uh, you know, listening to his masses and his homilies. And since he was coming, I decided to go. I thought I'd go. And de depending upon that, see the situation. But I went and it was from 3 o'clock to 8.30. That's a long, long time. I managed to go for all three days. And on the first, very first day, uh, Father announced, uh, Joyce is being touched by the Lord. I didn't know whether it was a Joyce who was in the auditorium. But I claimed that healing for my husband. And trust me, it came. My husband was a person who was complaining 27, 24-7, either of um, wanting to vomit or stomach ache or something or the other, and no sleep in the night. He, his day was night and night was day. sleeping tablets. Ever since that retreat, sleeps very well at night. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I just keep thanking and praising Jesus so often. So much so, now I want to go to the pharmacy and return his medicines Please that I had for his, his uh, stomach and his vomiting. Please. I just haven't had the time that I'm going to go and return because I have full faith that my husband has been touched. Yeah. For me, the healing has been tremendous. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So it is it it was all about you listening to the word of God, you renewing your mind, and by faith believing. So you believed, you claimed it, and you received it. And that is yes. why that is what yes. we just saw in, in Mark 11 24. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us have a look at it again. Thank you, Jesus. So the word of God says here that... Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. You always had this desire that your, um, that your husband is, is healed uh, from whatever he's going through. And at that point in time, when father would have made that uh, declaration, it is, uh, it is given in Matthew 18, 19. Praise Jesus. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by their father in heaven. So the, the father Michael would have spoken and you agreed. So yes. it was a prayer of agreement. That what he spoke, you were in agreement and you claimed it for your husband. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Ma'am. Yes. Thank 
um mam please pray, uh, pray for a patrick member uh, she met with an accident her name is nitya uh sister what is her name nitya 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 yeah ma'am wellington oh. holy nothing wellington ma'am she is working there only last week she met with an accident and doctors has advised her to undergo a surgery in the face because she is having two fracture so please pray for her ma'am keep her keep her in a prayer in your prayers okay nitya right so in the name yes, of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen Heavenly Father, Your Word says in Matthew eighteen nineteen, when two agree about anything on earth, it is agreed by our Father in heaven. So, Lord, along with every brother and sister on this call, we believe, Lord, that You are present with us, and whatever we agree by faith, it is agreed by You, and we receive that healing manifestation. Lord, this is a prayer of agreement. for sister nitya every bone in your body was out of joint so that her bones are in place you were bruised you were wounded and by your wounds and stripes nitya has been healed there is nothing missing nothing broken in her life lord by the power of the holy spirit in your name jesus i command every every bone every tendon every tissue to be in the rightful position with proper orientation lord as as you were scarred at the pillar your skin was torn open all over your body so that our skin is intact is healed and made perfect lord we thank you that as we have agreed sister nitya is healed and made whole nothing missing nothing broken lord the word that has gone out of my mouth it does not return void without accomplishing the purpose for which it is sent because your word is active and living and you sent your word and you have you healed your people according to psalms 107:20 so just the way the roman centurion servant was healed when you send the word to him we believe lord that wherever sister nitya is right now she is healed in jesus name for the glory of god our father loving daddy we make this prayer in the name of your beloved son lord jesus christ amen 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 thank you jesus praise god so if uh, there is nothing else uh, to be added um, could we go ahead with the closing prayer sister yes yes ma'am almighty god we started this meeting with you and we are closing it with you thank you for making this meeting a success may the things we have learned today heart and may we put them in into action god we thank you for delivering your word to the speaker we pray that those seeking a answer receive it and that those who needed a special touch were granted that touch thank you for hearing and answering our prayers thank you i am immensely happy and thankful to propose a oath of thanks as it is quoted nothing happens without divine permission so first of all i would like to thank almighty to give this day and permit us to listen to his living word i would like to extend my gratitude to all the pacific animators to organize such a lovely bible session for us thank you sisters my deep sense of gratitude to ma'am sumitra for a, for her to share the word of god follow, followed by lovely explanation and teach us how to relate it to our routine life thank you ma'am each time when the session ends we have a perfect answer to our questions that pester in us um thank you ma'am for teaching us how to change our negative thoughts 
and meditate the word of God and head towards positivity and how we prosper when we meditate on his words. It was really helpful, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I thank everyone who are part of today's session. Once again, my sincere feeling of gratitude to everyone. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, my dear precious sister, you can just call me Sumitra. I am just like one of you. I would not want to be called as ma'am. So you can just call me Sumitra. Yes, sister. Sure, okay. sure. Praise, sure God. Praise God. Praise thank God. you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you all for joining in and uh, we will see you. Um, we will see uh, each other again uh, next month uh, as for the uh, schedule of uh, the teachings. Uh, bye for now. Thank you. Praise God. Bye. Bye. Bye.